Rapport family, we are back with another great edition of Building Rapport. Today we have a special guest, Auburn head football coach Hugh Freeze joins us to talk a little bit about uh, year one here with Auburn football. Coach, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, you, you know, I, I agreed to this via Twitter, I think, because <laughs> I felt like, man, one of my one of my dudes was 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 uh, in, in jeopardy if I did not. <laughs> And so I'm, uh, I'm I'm glad to be on with you guys today. Uh, Coach, I want to get the interview kicked off, starting to, uh, um, talking about year one with Auburn football. Uh, now, you came from Liberty. You coached in the SEC before. Uh, some of the things that we saw in the media, it seemed like this was an opportunity that you have had your eye on. Can you talk about what it means to get the job as the head coach at Auburn and you know, you know, the history behind it and why Auburn means so much. Well, you're right. It's, um, you know, we, we were very, very blessed to have a great job at Liberty in a great environment with great people and great facilities and felt like we could win a lot of football games there for sure. And I love those young men there. And so it was not an easy place to leave. And so to to leave a place like that, you've got to feel really, really, really good about um, the place where you're going. And I've just always felt like that um, Jill and I and our family and our core values really aligned really well with with Auburn, um, the the place, the the community, obviously the university, and. Um, I've always felt like it should be a, a program that's mentioned among the elite football programs in the country. And, and so when you combine what I believe is an opportunity to, to coach at a program like that um, at an environment where you really feel like you and your family fit, it's, uh, it's really hard to pass up some of those. And I know that there will be great challenges to try to catch up to some of the, the schools in this league that are doing it uh, really, really, really well. Uh, but it's also a place that I think can do that or I wouldn't have taken it. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, uh, it's exciting to, to take this on. Yeah, Coach, um, you've got a daunting task in front of you to try to figure out how to, to get the, the program back to the place where you said that you feel like it can be. Uh, but one of the things I, I, I've heard you say this a couple of times now, and I want to drill down a little bit about it. You said you had a lot of things that you had on you know, your expectation list of like, I'm going to come in, I'm going to knock out these things, but it hasn't necessarily lined up the way that you thought. What are, what are probably the biggest things, if you, you know top one or two things that are on that list of, this is how I thought it was going to be, but the reality doesn't really match up to that. Well, I, I don't know if, if I may attack that a little different direction. I, I think right now, if you ask me, you know, what is it that we have to get accomplished? It's, uh, you know, obviously when I first got here, it was it was recruit, 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 recruit. And you had two and a half weeks to get the 23 class in the boat. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it be by the transfer portal or by high school kids. And I think we did about as well as we could do in the time frame we were given with that. And then you turn your attention in January to the 24 class, um, because I really believe that the 24 and 25 class will determine, you know, if we really get this place uh, turned back to what it can be. So that was a priority then. Well, now the priority in February for me is creating culture within the walls here. Mm. Um, for what we have to change uh, from whatever it's been um, to, 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 you know, give us a chance to compete in year one, which, you know, who knows what that really looks like at this point. But I know without us having great culture within our locker room that we probably have very little chance to close that gap very much. So uh, that's, that is, the priority of our mind right now, obviously recruiting never ends, but um, we are finally at a point where we can, you know, start our installs for, for spring practice. And at the same time, really start to try to establish the culture. Uh, Coach, you got hired, you did an introductory press conference, and then you, it seems you seemingly immediately went out to recruit. Uh, I think at one point I told Ike, I don't know if he slept in his own bed, <laughs> and uh, in the last like 45 days, can you talk a, a little bit more about the challenge you uh, of 
recruiting on a truncated timetable coming in as a new head coach. And do you guys feel like you filled the needs that you needed to uh, to kind of help build this spring? It's, uh, first, it's very uncomfortable. Um, the, that type of task with the early signing period and you getting hired at the round, right at the first of December or the end of November. But, um, you know, I know how this league recruits. I know that at that point in time in the recruiting process that, um, most staffs have their claws in, in, in their guys pretty well. And it's going to be very difficult to, to walk in. I do think some of the connections that uh, uh, that I made while being in this league were somewhat helpful. And obviously the job that some of the the current staff that was here, like Zach and, and Cadillac, thought their, their roles were vital that hunt and kept us in the game uh, for some of those high school kids in particular, and then us feeling filling the need. So it was very uncomfortable. I don't like feeling that way. Um, I won't feel that way with this 24 class, even though we've got a little ground to make up. I'll, we have time to do it. So the ball's in our court to do that. And, and I will make sure that we have a plan that, that does that with the 24 class. But it was very uncomfortable in those two and a half weeks, for sure. Do I feel like we have uh, filled the needs? Um, we absolutely filled needs. Now, um, how much did we elevate ourselves? I don't, I don't know yet. I haven't coached us a single practice. Right. Uh, so that's hard to say. But if you look at paper, I mean, we needed to sign nine offensive linemen and um, to get to our 16 guys. And, and we signed eight. Uh, so we're still in the, in the hunt for one more in that second portal period. Um, and, you know, we're, the jury's still out probably on the quarterback room until we coach them some this, this spring and kind of see where we think we are. Um, we would probably take one more uh, linebacker, maybe a receiver. And that, that's really all that we have, have room for if we decide to go the, that route. But again, I'm, I'm encouraged by watching our, our kids and their workouts. I think there's, we might be better at some spots than I gave us credit for. Um, but again, I, I'd like to get through spring before I say that, but we absolutely, it was uncomfortable to answer your question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do think we, we, we certainly filled some numbers <laughs> at positions that we needed. Now it's a matter of, uh, how, how much do we, uh, improve ourselves? Uh, coach, as, as uncomfortable as it was, uh, you still out recruited, some other programs in the conference that some people thought maybe it would be hard to out recruit. I mean, you guys did a phenomenal job, I think, in my opinion, of just getting out there and hitting the trail and recruiting. Uh, I see you've been working with On to Victory. Can you talk a little bit about recruiting and On to Victory and how you guys have been able to accomplish some of the things that you have been? Well, you know, that was very new to me. Probably that added to some of the uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. um, because those are discussions that I've never had to have before. Um, and, you know, we can talk about all the issues with it all we want, but the facts are it's part of the, it's part of the, of the game now. And, and so now it's a matter of how do you, uh, within the rules, you know, use it to, to benefit your program. And, um, you know, that's, I'm still learning truthfully. I was probably ill prepared to, to handle that part. Cause to me, it's the locker room that should be the priority. Right. And, uh, I hope that we can remain that way, uh, with our own, the victory collective. I do appreciate uh, them and all the people that are, that are a part of that. Um, certainly that benefits our young, young men and women here on campus that are a part of our athletics program. So we're thankful for on the victory and, and hopefully uh, it continues to grow and, and it benefits our, our team, you know, greatly, but I do want it to primarily center around um, uh, young men that are, have come and done it the right way and created value for themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just, that's a personal preference of mine. 
I know that uh, I know that it's it's talked about in recruiting a lot, but I, I think we've got to be very careful in our sport today uh, to make sure we're not setting up young men to fail because we made them feel entitled mm -hmm. uh, to something and they haven't earned it. And man, that's I think uh, we're losing a bit of that if we're not careful. And so I'm very honest with. This 24 class, I will be for sure, because I've got time for them to trust us and, and build a relationship where I can speak truth to them and say, listen, this is uh, some examples of what our collective is doing with our current players. And, man, you have the same opportunity um, mm -hmm. uh, to do some of this, uh, something of similar nature. And but it takes work and it takes you committing to the process. And it doesn't always happen in one year's time. <laughs> Right. Um, that's just real life. And um, and so I, I look forward to having a full year to be able to speak those truths into the guys we're recruiting. Coach, I, I want to drill down a little bit on the evaluation process that you talked about, both for your current players and then, you know, as it relates to some things that you've hinted that you might be willing to take a step back from play calling duties in that nature. Um how difficult is it on a short period of time to evaluate the room that you have to figure out what you need to do to fill that space? And then what things, how are you going to figure out how to do your work for the next season? I mean, evaluating where you guys need to pivot to for that next class. Um, you know, the, you trust number one, you have to hire people you trust in the evaluation process. Cause I don't have, there's not enough hours in the day for me to, to do everything that this spot has to do in the recruiting world and the monitoring of your, you know, how your team's doing and don't, they don't want to show up on list. Right? We, we were clear about that. <laughs> you do what now? Say so that we don't, they don't need to show up in any on lists. lists. Right. No, lists. Yeah, no, no, that's right. But, <laughs> but some do, and I have to manage all of that. And so I, one of the things that I'm, I do, you have, I have to hire people because I know myself, I have to hire staff that I think are gifted in the evaluation process. And I have to trust that some, if they tell me this guy is, is on our rating system, the, the top level, man, then I, I've got to go after them and recruit. I don't have time to go at that moment to go watch everybody, particularly when you're taking over by the time next year arrives, I will have more time to do that, but didn't have that fortune uh, to, to be able to do it. So you have to trust those people in the evaluation of not only who you're going after, but what that current room looks like in their eyes. Hmm. And so, um, you know, I'm thankful that we have a good crew down there and personnel that have, have been with me a while and, and I do trust. And, you know, ultimately if we get five or six here in a room that, that don't measure up, then I'm going to look at them. <laughs> they have to answer for that. You know, everybody's got a job to do hmm. and I've got to answer to people and they've got to answer to 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 the to us as a staff if if the guys that they uh, said we should go get we get and then they they're not to the level that uh, we need to win football games here there's a problem right. and we we have to answer to that and be accountable um in this building to whatever your job description is so i use them a lot and trust them and um then moving forward obviously it's uh it's uh, managing your roster is very difficult now mm -hmm. with you're not quite sure exactly who's staying, who's going sometimes. And, um, and obviously managing those numbers is not easy. Um, so we've, hopefully we can get some more parameters around the calendar, um, that will help us all. But, you know, we already have the 24, you know, plat class of what we're looking at, how many we're looking at in each room. And, um, you know, we try to base our recruiting off those numbers. Well, coach, you're at Auburn and beating Alabama is something that's very important. Uh, <laughs> now you're the, you're a man who owns two wins over Nick Saban, which is a short list. That's a short club. I don't know if you guys should have jackets or <laughs> special medallions. Yeah, I think we should. I think yeah. that's a good idea. But, uh, you know, as as somebody who has actually been able to close on those wins against Nick Saban, 
Um, you know, what is the plan here and what is the message? You know, what kind of attitude do you take towards this game? Is it just another game on the schedule or are you telling your kids, you know, hey, man, you know, we have to go out here and, and, and win, you know, with as much success as Alabama has had. You know, you know, what is your approach to this game every year? Well, there's 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 been uh, here recently basically two gold standards in this league and um it's Alabama and Georgia mm -hmm. and you know the rest of us some are at different levels I would say you know probably LSU and Tennessee closed the gap some this year um on, on those guys and the rest of us are trying to to play catch up and um you know but I we're, we will never you know back down to saying we we want an opportunity at the gold standard and and fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, we get a shot at both of them every year yeah. <laughs> right now. Yeah, right. So, um, you know, we get both Alabama and Georgia, and well, what a great opportunity that is. And I think that's the way we have to approach it is, is man, we have an opportunity to judge ourselves against uh, what has been the gold standard of college football for, for a long time in Alabama's case and more recently uh, Georgia's case. So, um, you know, we have great opportunities to do that, and those games are – different and they should feel a little different and that's okay i mean it's um, obviously on the win loss um they all count the same but it doesn't in people's eyes that live here yeah um, i've been a part of state rivalries I, I get it i know how how much that means to our people and our fan base and you know we're gonna we're gonna be excited uh to play in that game and Hopefully in time, I don't know how fast, but hopefully in time is something that uh, the expectation is we're walking out there to win it. Mm. Coach, quick follow up. Um, you know, you uh, mentioned in your introductory press conference uh, two things uh, that you feel like you're good at. Right. And that's turning programs around quickly and quarterback development. Um, so beating Alabama, will, you know, those two, two those two things will be important uh, kind of moving forward, uh, you know. What if you're a fan right now, if you've been a fan of Auburn football, it's been a tough couple of years. Um, you know, what is your message to the fans about the expectation of this turnaround in year one? Uh, Auburn went five and seven last year. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, in year one, what should fans expect in terms of wins and losses on the field? And then going into year two, your first full recruiting class. Um, Again, where do you, what is your expectation of where you guys will be? Will you be competing for the West in year two, or do you feel like, hey, we can compete now? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, we we haven't practiced. Here, here's what I think is a. I'm big on on reasonable expectations. Mm -hmm. Reasonable expectation is that the Auburn fan base should expect our young men to passionately compete for sixty minutes um, in every single game. And for us to play smart, disciplined football, exciting football uh, for those 60 minutes. I have no idea what that scoreboard is going to say in year one. And, and I might have a better idea after the 15 practices we have. But uh, currently, I really don't know. And, but I think the reasonable expectation is that they should be excited about the way we, um, the way we represent this university with the passion we play with for 60 minutes. Mm. Then year two, I don't know. Let's see how well we recruit. If we recruit <laughs> really well, I'm, I'm good with saying we're ready to compete. But uh, we, we've got a ways to go yet. Uh, yeah, uh, you got Walker White out here with Can't a whistle. For you. Uh, yeah, can't talk about him, but uh, <laughs> you know we're, we're off to a good start in 24. Okay, all right. Just talking about gold standards and and really just kind of the coaching in the league. Last time you were in the league, you know, I mean, the SEC is always going to have dynamic talent, but I feel like the SEC has gone uh, undergone a transformation as far as the coaching talent is concerned. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like the difference this time around with having so many dynamic coaches, specifically in the SEC West, that you're going to have to go up against? Uh, you know, I always felt like you know, everyone had really good coaching and uh, that certainly hasn't changed. Um, you know, it, it doesn't in the, in the West, it just or in the East also. It, I don't think it, everyone has a chance to win um, on a given Saturday because the, everyone has some players. Now it's different. I mean, our depth is not the same as some of the others and there's other schools that can say that. Um, 
but that doesn't mean on a given day that you don't have a great plan and you get a few breaks and all of a sudden momentum kicks in your favor and, and you find yourself in the fourth quarter competing against a team whose roster is probably a little better than yours. I experienced that quite a few times at Ole Miss and, um, you know, but our kids and our fans believe we had a chance uh, going in most every game after year two. And maybe in year two, they believe that I don't know, I can't, my memory's not as good as it used to be, but, um, you know, so I, I think that's the message that every school is sending. Hey man, we've got good coaches and they do. And um, it's not like you're just going to walk out there and out coach people every single Saturday because everybody's good. And man, if you happen to stumble upon a, a, a great game plan and you get a little momentum early on, you can find yourself, you know, competing against teams that are probably a little better than you on the talent. And I think every coach in this league has that capacity. Yeah. So let me follow up on that because you talked about momentum. You've been on the opposite side of walking into Jordan Hare Stadium. Yep. What is it like as an opposing team coming into that kind of environment? It's a tough place to play. I think the the uh, the, the fans and the student section here are incredibly uh, energetic and passionate, and it shows. And you know, if your product on the field is uh, is is playing with good heart and passion and discipline. I think it's a very difficult place for opponents to walk in and win. And I'm excited about experiencing the home sideline. Mm. Coach, is, uh, is Auburn a better program than Ole Miss? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I love my years at Ole Miss. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> still have, still have different, uh, I mean, have so many good friends there. Mm -hmm. And obviously my family still lives there. And so I was born in, in Mississippi and probably will die there. And uh, so I'm thankful for the five years I had there. And, and obviously I think we did a lot of good things and certainly don't, I hate the way it ended, but uh, you know, uh, who's to say what's the better program currently? Do I think Auburn potentially has, has the, uh, has the potential to be um, more in the, the discussions of the elite programs in the country? I sure hope so. You know, that's that's why I took this job. But uh, I have great respect for, for the job Lane's done and, and the people there. And, um, you know, until we prove that 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 we are a better program, I, I don't I don't feel good about jumping out there and saying anything about anyone. right now. <laughs> well, I, I meant I meant coach more in the in the, in the lines of you got a 90 million dollar football only facility. Uh, you've got, um, you know, from a resource standpoint. Uh, you know, do you feel like you have the tools that you need to be uh, to to help turn the program around? And yeah. in today in today's deal with yeah, NIL you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, you know the the the, but others do too. You know, and if if kids are making decisions solely based upon NIL, you know, I, I don't know how well we'll do with that. That's because I'm that's that's really not the way I want to go about it. Sure. I want to build the, the locker room and um, I want kids to get everything that's coming to them, but I want it to be after they've created the value for themselves um, in, in the program. But, and I don't know that everybody's like that. So it's, it's uh, but do I feel like we have the resources here to, to be an elite program? Absolutely. Mm. I mean, come walk around this place and, and sense it and feel it. And, and so, uh, I'm excited about that possibility. Well, Coach, uh, again, you're still in your first offseason. I want to pivot back to spring practice. Um, and particularly, I want to talk about quarterback. Um, now, it was highly publicized what you were able to do with Malik Willis. Um, third round draft pick. At, at one point, they were talking about him being one of the first quarterbacks off the board. Um, so he made it to the league. Uh, you've touted quarterback development. You've got a, a quarterback in Robbie Ashford who – maybe has some of the same athletic abilities that Malik had. Um, you know, how important is it to you in your system to have a mobile quarterback in today's college football? And, you know, um, what is that balance going to look like between uh, run and pass? And, you know, we, we looked at some of the tape of your previous quarterbacks, but can you talk about the quarterback position and what you were able to do with Malik and how you plan to 
kind of replicate that success here at Auburn? Well, I like to be balanced. Um, I think you have to be in this league, and um, I don't think it's ever good when you you feel like you just have to drop back and throw the football. I, I think the D line is going to be more athletic in most cases, and, and you're going to have a hard day if that's the case. So I think we've got to be balanced, and I think Robbie's uh, gifts from watching tape um, allow you to, to, to use him in a lot of different ways if he's the guy. Um, we've got to figure that out. And, again, I'm at a little disadvantage on some of these questions because sure. um, I just hadn't coached him a single day. And um, I can watch some clips of, of him throwing the football, and you think, wow, I'm excited about the possibilities. And, you know, they could show me another cut up that makes me go, oh, my gosh, we got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's kind of hard. I don't, I, you know, you just don't know cause you weren't in the room. You don't, I don't know what it was being told. I don't know exactly how the protections were. And, um, you know, so it's, we've had success with people like Malik and Chad Kelly and Bo Wallace and, and um, Brian Applin and Buckshot at Liberty and, We've thrown for a lot of yards, and, and we've been balanced, and I hope we can do the same here. I'm also excited about Holden and TJ. You know, I see them working hard, and, um, you know, I, I love competition. I think the ones that, that shy away from that probably, uh, you know, are telling telling you something. And the ones who rise when, when the competition is there, I think those are the ones you want to surround yourself with. And so um, we're looking, Philip and I, and – and uh, Kent and, and the other guys that take pride in being able to coach quarterbacks real well. We we look forward to getting started here in a couple of weeks. I actually I, I want to take it all the way back because I was doing, you know, I'm trying to go, it's like, oh man, did, did Hugh Freeze play football? Like how did he get into being a football coach? And you started in, in, in high school football, but like what made you make the transition over from wanting to be a baseball player to being a football coach? That was that was pretty easy for me. My two choices that I felt like I had were Dairy farming or coaching? Okay. What? I absolutely did not enjoy milking cows <laughs> every morning. And I had to do it. It taught me a lot of great lessons about work ethic and getting up early and, and, and getting it done. And um, I had the morning shift because I played sports in high school. And But all I knew was that. And then we owned the family farm. And then my uncles and my father were coaches. So that's how they made a living because neither one paid very much back then mm. uh, to make ends meet. They both, they were part of both. And um, I was just so drawn to the uh, impact that I witnessed uh, high school coaches, my father, my high school coaches that they had in the community. I mean, it was truthfully back then, you know, it's not that way anymore, unfortunately, at some places. But, man, if coach said something, man, it, you just – that was enough. That's what you – and it didn't matter, man. You didn't argue. You didn't You didn't debate. Man, if coach said something, it was – he had that kind of impact. And, and I was just so drawn to that um, that I knew – for a long time that that's that's what i wanted to do well coach i want to thank you for joining us uh to talk a little auburn football and and the and we're going to be following the many things you have to evaluate this spring in your first year with the program and uh you know with all the new kids that you have coming in either through recruiting or through the portal uh so thanks for giving us a little bit of your time we appreciate it you got it. I'm just to get on the phone some recruits. Guys, that's it for another great edition of Building Rapport with Coach Q Freeze. If you guys want more content like this, please hit like and subscribe. We are the War Report on every social media platform, TW Report on TikTok. Guys, we're signing off. And as always, War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle.